So how does color really heal in our skin? When we poke or cut pigment into the skin, why doesn't it all just bleed out? How and why is it held inside of our tissue? We lose about a million dead skin cells each day. So why is it that we don't lose all the color in our tattoos? We put it in at a deeper level. We put it in on the layer that's alive, the dermis. In the process of our bodies trying to heal and push the pigment out, it gets stuck along the way. So let's talk about what's going on inside your tissue. So how does color heal in the skin? When we poke or cut pigment into the skin, why doesn't it all just bleed out? How and why is it held inside our tissue? We lose about a million dead skin cells each day. So why is it that we don't lose the color in a tattoo? The answer is we put it in a deeper level. We put it in the layer that's alive, the dermis. In the process of our bodies trying to heal and push the pigment out, it gets stuck along the way. Pathology is the science of the causes and effects of diseases or the laboratory examination of samples of body tissue for diagnostic or forensic purposes. So let's talk about what's going on in the tissue. In a previous lesson, we discussed the cell renewal process where epithelial cells become keratinocytes and are pushed up from the basal layer, pushed up to the surface of the skin, becoming corneocytes, our protective outer sleeve or shield. How or why pigment manages to stay in the skin is a slightly different process. Pigment healing in our tissue has more to do with our body's immune system and how we eliminate pathogens or invaders within our bodies. Immune system and inflammatory response. Let's start with the initial sounding of the alarms or our inflammatory response. This is truly our initial field of battle. Our inflammatory response is triggered when the dermis is penetrated. This, of course, is the layer where blood vessels and pain receptors lie. This is why if you don't see blood, you are not deep enough for the ink to stick. All of the skin cells in the epidermis are dead or dying, moving upward to be shed in the next few months. When the tattoo needle enters the dermis, mast cells are alerted. A mast cell is a migrant cell of connective tissue that contains many granules rich in histamine and heparin, also called chemokines. Chemokines are the family of chemicals released to cause our inflammatory response to other cells, especially the cells lining our blood vessels around the wound, causing them to swell and slightly separate and therefore enlarging and increasing the blood flow to the area. This is called vasodilation. This is bad for the tattoo because the more irritated our skin is when we're working in it, the more it will bleed and push color out. The longer our bodies think we are injured and it's harder to work and to heal itself and the bigger the response to remove any foreign invaders, i.e. pigment or ink. When the blood vessels enlarge, they release the white blood cells, also called phagocytes, specifically for cleaning up and eliminating pathogens. There are a few white blood cells, but for pigment retention, let's stick to neutrophils and macrophages. White blood cells are also called leukocytes. For the focus today about pigment retention, we are focusing on the two first responding white blood cells that gobble up pathogens. They are macrophages and neutrophils. Both are phagocytes. The neutrophils, which are abundant but self-implode, lasting only a few days, and the macrophages, which come secondly, are focused on the bigger pathogens, are equipped with cytoplasmic extensions to reel the pigment in. Phagocytes are a family of white blood cells that protect the body by ingesting harmful foreign particles, bacteria, and dead or dying cells. Their name comes from the Greek phagion, to eat. 
So when released from the blood vessel, these two types of fighter cells are very attracted to the area that chemokines are released and immediately go to work eliminating pathogens by gobbling them up. Some ink may be carried back to the lymphatic system while most stay in the interstitial fluid, this being the tattoo. When macrophages get old and die, they are often eaten up by other macrophages and phagocytes, this being one reason that ink travels over time in our skin. So to review, ink is not just poked or cut or stained into our tissue. In order for the ink to stay, it must reach the dermis, it must be gobbled up by the phagocytic white blood cells and get stuck in the process of healing. This is also another reason why pigment is harder to remove the longer it stays in the skin. Our bodies are constantly trying to filter these pigment particles through our liver. Our bodies are constantly pulling pigment deeper to filter it out, as well as it's fading through desquamation. Yeah, yeah.